Uh, uh, Dick Judge, uh, I, uh, Chairman of the Grist Milk Kingsbury Pond Grist Milk Committee. Um, Clark Kingsbury. Uh, we're on the site. Uh, you'll be able to see uh, around you uh, the original self-contained farm uh, in in the United States, or before it was the United States. Uh, they had cattle. They had a grist mill. They had they grew their own. Uh, brought a, a corn and feed and um, uh, the mill is, is special because uh, it predates a lot of things that people think are around. It's about 300 years old. We have an addition that's, uh, that's built in 1819, so that's the new addition. The, uh, the original building uh, was used for milling corn, uh, barley, hops, etc. That's the new addition of the mill. This is the original. Uh, we go in, you'll be able to see the, uh, it was put together 300 years ago with wood pegs. Nails were very expensive or really hard to come by. Uh, the early settlers uh, had very little of anything uh, and what they had uh, was owned by the king. Every, every, this was set up as a colony to feed back to England uh, everything from wood to y you name it, all the natural resources went back to England. Um, any boards over, I think it's uh, 18 inches, were considered king boards uh, because if they were over 18 inches wide, they were owned by the king. Uh, you can get in a lot of trouble for having a house with uh, boards over 18 inches, so a lot of the colonists hid, hid those boards in, 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 in rooms off to the side that uh, people wouldn't see, uh, but it's something they were uh, very proud of producing because uh, the U.S. at the time had some uh, great trees. The second uh, part of this mill's life was a, a sawmill. They used water to, to uh, run saw blades. Uh, it gives you an idea how powerful water is. There are no natural ponds in Medfield. They were all built for mill purposes. This mill in particular is, uh, is very old. It, um, it was about the date of uh, King, the King Philip Wars and so forth. Uh, where they build, uh, where they burned a couple of mills. Um, the natives uh, burned a couple of mills because they knew if they burned the mill, there was a really good chance that the, uh, uh, the English would move on. It, as, you, as I was saying before, it's all wood peg. Uh, mortise and tenon construction, they, they, they cut a hole in, in the, in the uh, ridge pole and uh, slide in the, uh, the other parts of the roof and then put a peg through both of them. Um, it's unbelievable that this construction is 300 years old and it's still here. I don't know if you could find a building built today that you would expect to get 300 years out of. Here are the mill stones. Uh, they, uh, there are two stones uh, here. You can see the cut here. Um, this this uh, leather strap was put on uh, probably a hundred years ago, but much later in, in the stone's life. Uh, and they, they filled, the, filled the top with uh, uh, like a plaster of Paris just to add weight to the top stone. The grain was put in the, in the, in the top, in the middle, uh, whether it's corn, uh, 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 nice and dried out. They put the corn kernels in there. Uh, the, the, the bottom wheel stays stable, the top wheel spins. And as the, as the corn travels toward the outside of the wheel, it's, it's smashed and comes out as corn meal. Put it through again, you're, you're working on flour. As it, as it comes through, there are cuts made in the stone that naturally push the, the grains to the outside of the wheel. And then there's a larger cut in the stone here, uh, which, so once the, once the grain is, has been crushed, many times over because it's, it's spinning and getting crushed by these, these grooves in the stone. Uh, it falls through here and ends up in the basement uh, as flour and, uh, and so the, the farmers would drop their whole grain up here and take the carts down below and pick up their flour and uh, flowers or, or cornmeal and so forth. This is a bone grinder that was put in later on. Uh, there's huge teeth in this thing, and the farmers would bring, uh, uh, back in the day, they used everything. So that ca the, the cattle, uh, they would harvest the cattle, um, 
course, eat the meat or use the, use the milk and then eat the meat and then uh, take the bones to the, to the mill to be ground uh, into bone meal. And the next year, the, a handful of bone meal and then a, a seed, uh, it would explode because the cornmeal is a great uh, a natural uh, fertilizer. This contraption here are, is, is like a Lincoln log set. One of these big beams uh, slides into another one and it creates a, a, a leverage system where you can stand on like a rocking chair setup, pin, uh, put pins into the top stone, and two or, two or three guys could s lean on this thing and would pick the top stone up. It had pins on it so they could flip the stone and re-chisel it or uh, sharpen the stone, they call it. Basically cut those grooves again because after a while the stones would wear down. Expressions that came from the mills, uh, you know, run of the mill, all that kind of stuff. But uh, keep your nose to the grindstone came from when the granite, smack it against an another granite stone, there's a distinct smell. So you got that same smell if the stones started rubbing against each other and you would get this, this burning smell of granite against granite and that was bad for the stones. It needed to have some kind of grains in between the stones at all time to, sp to be smashing. If the millstone started to burn, that was really bad for the mill, really bad for the stones. So the idea was keep your nose to the grindstone was because if you smell it burning, that means it's time to add more grain or stop the, stop the uh, milling process. This is 150 years old, but it was considered brand new technology. It's a water wheel. Instead of a water wheel spinning like this, a turbine is just a water wheel on its side and spins like this. Um, the water comes in from the side, spins, the, spins what's basically a fan inside, a big a cast iron fan, and that turns the shaft and then runs the mill, turns the stones. And we'll see that downstairs. Our hope is to uh, get this downstairs in the basement and uh, uh, hook it up, gear it up to the stones and get the stones going in. Other implements uh, we have around the mill, the things we've found uh, on site. So we're trying to fill this building with things that were made in Medfield or things that were used in Medfield. It's starting with forks, working all, all our way up to all kinds of implements. Here's a saw blade from the original uh, sawmill, which was this addition. Like I said, the, the, the power of water is unbelievable. To be able to run a saw like that and cut massive timbers uh, just by water, something to behold. This is a, an old uh, uh, thresher. Uh, or thrasher, it used to, uh, you beat the, uh, the wheat from the shaft. And basically it, it just, you, you put it in here and it just beats on the, beats on it. It's, it, it saves people from, you know, banging the wheat and, tr and trying to get the, the wheat off the shaft. Uh, this is the box that the, the, the the, the flour or the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, cornmeal would come out of, drop into this box. They would pull, bag it here and then bring it out that door. Uh, the farmer would bring his wagon down around and he'd drop off grain upstairs and pick up flour down here. About 150 years ago when they put the turbine, turbine in, uh, they, they upgraded the, the uh, cogs and so forth here into cast iron. Um, if you look up here, you see the bottom of the stone. This is the bottom of the millstone that's upstairs. All this was uh, built by shipwrights. Uh, the guys who built the ships that sailed over here um, from England uh, built this mill. And so hence, people weren't that tall back then, so they didn't put, build it any higher than they needed to, just being very conservative as, as the original settlers were conserving energy, conserving resources, etc. This is uh, where the water comes into the mill. Uh, it's controlled by the head race, uh, the amount of water, and once the turbine is installed down down below, um, we can uh, operate the water to come through at a, at a heck of a volume, and uh, it'll spin that turbine. It'll turn the stones. It will turn that bone grinder. This is the shaft that goes up into the bone grinder that I was describing earlier. Um, a leather belt would go around this uh, from the shaft. They would uh, pull this leather belt and put it, put it on here 
and it would spin the bone grinder upstairs. Uh, the water would spin the bone grinder as well. Everything operated off the, off the water. This is a uh, part of the shaft that ran, so this would be half a wheel that they would, that they would mount with the other half of the wheel over here onto the, sh onto the shaft and run the leather belts off of. And the leather belts went to the bone grinder, went to the saw upstairs, etc. Everything turned off, turned off that. Anyway, we were able to purchase a wheel from a gentleman down in Georgia. It's not just a showpiece. He builds a lot of water wheels for people's backyard fountains and so forth. But he also built, built professional wheels and he was so excited to put one of his wheels on one of the oldest mills in the U.S. that he actually brought it up, delivered it, helped us install it, gave us a deal on it, um, and uh, it's, it's worked out great. This is the overflow for the pond. When it gets to a certain level, uh, it needs to go somewhere. That's where, that's where it went. It forms this, like a trout stream here. This is the, uh, I described the head race where they let the water into the mill. Uh, this is the tail race where the water, when the mill is rolling, uh, it, it, uh, there's a quite a bit of water that comes through, so it has to go out this tail race out the back of the mill. Uh, we have a lot of people, elderly or not, come up and just park their cars here and just enjoy their time uh, on the pond. We have beavers, of course, we have uh, river otters, we have muskrats, we have plenty of turtles, plenty of fish. We've been able to naturally rebuild the pond. Occasionally, if there's, if there's ice, uh, there wasn't any ice this year, which is very disturbing, but if there's ice, uh, we will roll out stones or logs out onto the ice. The ice melts, they fall to the bottom, create rookeries for the fish, and hence we have fantastic fishing here. So enjoy the, enjoy the view. Thanks, Medfield TV. Have a great day.